Hello everyone, welcome to Inno Tutorial. This video is going to be a part three of drawing share and bending moment diagram. If you've not watched part one and part two, try to watch part one and part two. And also, if this is the first time you are coming across my channel and you are searching for civil engineering content, do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel because I make content on civil engineering. So if you are searching for this kind of content, subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell notification icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be the first to get notification. With that being said, let's draw share and bending moment diagram of the beam shown. Now, as you can see, we have a beam that has a length of 3 meter and on this beam, we have a triangular distributed load of 2 kN per meter. So this is distributed across the length of the beam. So we have a pin support at point A and we have a roller support at point B. So we are going to draw the shear and bending moment diagram for this beam shown. Whenever you want to draw a shear and bending moment diagram, the first thing you need to do is you need to calculate the support reaction because this is going to help you to draw the shear and bending moment diagram. So as you can see, we have a pin support at point A and we have a roller support at point B. AS, that is the horizontal reaction at point A is going to be automatically equals to zero because we don't have any horizontal force acting on this beam. So we're going to be left with just the vertical reaction at point A and the vertical reaction at point B. So we're going to make an assumption on the direction of these forces. So we're going to see all the reaction should be acting upward. And if we have a positive value, our assumption is correct. If we have a negative value, our assumption is wrong. It is acting in the opposite direction. So this is going to be BY acting upward, while this is going to be AY and this is acting upward. So remember we said AS is going to be automatically equals to zero because we don't have any horizontal force acting on this beam. So let's calculate for BY. To calculate for BY, we are going to take the summation of moment at point A is equals to zero. So I'm going to say summation of moment at point A is equal to zero. And I'm going to say all the movements in the counterclockwise direction should be positive, while all the movements in the clockwise direction should be negative. So if we apply a force BY with relative to the point A, it's going to try to rotate this beam in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to have a positive value. And because we know that moment is force times distance, so it's going to be the force which is BY, then multiply by the distance. So the distance is 3 meters, as you can see. So this is the distance from BY to the point of interest, which is point A. So this is going to be positive BY, then multiply by the distance 3 meter. So the next value we're going to take a look at is the distributed load. So whenever you have a distributed load, you need to resolve this distributed load into its resultant. So as you can see, we have 2 kN per meter. So we are going to resolve this into its resultant. And how can we do this? We are basically just going to take the area of this triangle. So the area of this triangle is going to be 1 over 2. That is 1 over 2 multiplied by the height, which is 2 kN per meter. Then multiply by the length, which is 3 meter. So if we solve that, we are going to get the value as 3 kN. So this is going to be the resultant force. So the resultant force is going to be located somewhere here and the distance from this resultant force to the roller support, this is going to be one third of the length. So it's going to be one third of the length, which is three uh, meters. So it's going to be one third of three meters. While the distance from this resultant force to the pin support is going to be two third of the length. So it's going to be two third of three meter. So this is it. So this is the resultant force and the resultant force is 3 kN. So now if we apply a resultant force of 3 kN with relative to the pin support at point A, it is going to try to rotate this beam in the clockwise direction. So because it is clockwise, meaning it is going to be a negative moment. So it's going to be negative. So the force is 3 kN. So this is 3 kN. Then multiply by the distance. So what is the distance from 3 kN to the pin support A? As you can see, it is basically two third of, of the length. So the theories are going to cancel out. Then we're going to be left with just two. So the distance is basically two meters. So this is multiplied by two meters. So we don't have any additional force because 
a y is going to produce no moment because this is acting at point a and this is where we are taking the moment at so there will be no uh, moment because there is no distance so this is equals to zero so all you need to do you just need to solve for b y so it's very easy to solve for b y so if you solve for b y you are going to get b y is equals to two kilonewton so this is the vertical reaction at point b so b y is equals to two kilonewton so now we just need to solve for a y so how can we solve for a y to solve for a y we are just going to take the summation of all the vertical forces so we're going to say summation of all the forces in the y direction is equals to zero and we're going to make an assumption we're going to say all the forces acting upward should be positive why all the forces acting downward should be negative now if you take a look at this we have by is equals to two kilonewton so because we have the positive value meaning our initial assumption is correct and this is indeed acting upward so take note of that so now we are taking the summation of all the forces in the vertical direction equals to zero and all the forces acting upward should be positive while all the forces acting downward should be negative so as you can see by is acting upward so meaning this is positive so this is two kilonewton then we have three kilonewton this is acting downward so this is going to be negative so this is negative three kilonewton then we have a y and a y is acting upward this is our assumption so it's going to be positive so this is positive a y is equals to zero so two kilonewton minus three kilonewton is going to give us negative one kilonewton then plus a y is equals to zero so if we move this to the right side we're going to get a y is equals to one kilonewton so this is the vertical reaction at point a so a y is equals to one kilonewton so now we know a y is equals to one kilonewton and by is equals to two kilonewton we cannot use this to draw the shear and bending moment diagram now when you want to draw the shear and bending moment diagram you need to make sure that your areas they close up and you need to start from the left side then you need to move to the right side so this is how you draw shear and bending moment diagram so let's start from the left side so as you can see we are going to take a look at the first load here the first load we have here is one kilonewton and this is moving upward so meaning we are going to move upward a distance one kilonewton so this is what it means so we are going to move upward a distance one kilonewton so it is going to move this upward one kilonewton so take note of that now what do you see next after this what do you see next we see a distributed load that is a triangular distributed load of two kilonewton per meter so you need to take this step by step so that you don't make any mistake what i'm going to do now is i'm going to write this in a way you can easily understand so the first value we have is one kilonewton then we have plus a distributed load that is a triangular distributed load so we have a triangular triangular distributed load of two kilonewton per meter so now and the distance is three meter so now what we need to do is we just need to take the area of this triangle over here then we need to add it to one kilonewton so that we can get the next value so if we take the area of this triangle so basically it's going to be one over two then multiply by the height which is two kilonewton per meter then multiply by the length which is three meter so if we calculate that we are going to get the area, the value as three kilonewton because one over two multiply two multiply three is going to give us three so this is going to be one kilonewton so now take note of this as you can see this load are acting downward so meaning it is going to be negative because it is acting downward so it's going to be one kilonewton minus three kilonewton so one kilonewton minus three kilonewton is going to be equals to negative two kilonewton so this is going to be the next value so because this load stop at this region so it's going to be located somewhere here and it is going to be below zero because this is negative two so it's going to be somewhere here so it's going to be negative two kilonewton so now we need to connect one kilonewton to negative two kilonewton now this is where you need to pay close attention as you can see this load is not a constant load had it been we have a constant load then we can just connect this using a straight line like using a linear line because that is when we have a constant slope as you can see here we don't have a constant slope the slope is not constant 
it is changing from point A to point B. So it is not going to be a straight line. So what we need to do, it is we are going to use a parabola because this changes from point A to point B. So it's going to be a parabola. So now what I'm going to do, like I said in the previous lesson, we are going to use the short trick where it says, so I'm going to draw this here. So this, this is the set we're going to use. So it's going to be, please don't neglect a font, neglect deaf people instead. And I'm not saying you should neglect deaf people. This is just um, the way I use to draw this shape. So please don't neglect deaf people. Take care of them. So now what we need to do, how can we use this circle over here? As you can see, as we move from point A to point B, this is basically increasing. And this is a positive, this is a um, negative um, value because the forces are acting downward. So it is basically negative increasing slope, as you can see. Because the forces are acting downward, meaning we have negative. And because from point A to point B, it is increasing. So meaning we are going to take a look at this part here, negative increasing. So meaning the shape is going to look something like this. So take note of that. So we are going to have something like this. So this is the shape. So this is the shape. So because we know that the length of this beam is three meter, so meaning this distance from here to here is just is just basically going to be half half of three meter. So this is basically going to be one point five meter. Why this is going to be one point five meter as well. So it is basically just half of the length. So as you can see, this is a positive. This is the positive region. Why this is the negative region. So now, as you can see, we are having negative 2 kN now. So negative 2, two kN. Now, what you see next, we see a load of 2 kN going upward. So meaning this is going to be a positive value. So meaning we now have negative 2 kN plus 2 kN. So negative 2 plus 2 is going to give us 0. So meaning this is going to stop at 0. Yeah. We just need to connect this. So this is going to be the share diagram so as you can see the share diagram uh, closes up so if your share diagram um, doesn't close up you need to check your work so as you can see from point a to point b the share diagram closes up so this is how you know if your answer is correct that is if your share diagram is correct or not so, so now let's move to the moment diagram now when you want to draw the moment diagram you need to take a look at the area of the share diagram so this is how you draw the moment diagram now, as you can see on the shared diagram, we have this area, then we also have this area, that is we have this shape, we also have this shape. So meaning we are going to take the area of this shape, we are also going to take the area of this shape. Now as you can see, this is not a triangle, so please, this is not a triangle. This is basically a parabola. So this distance is 1.5 meter, while the height, the height of the parabola is basically one kilonewton as you can see over here as you can see over here this is one kilonewton why the why the length is 1.5 uh, meter so now we just need to take the area of this parabola so now as you can see this is basically a half parabola so we need to know the area of half parabola so how do we take the area of half par uh, parabola so if you take a look at this image we have the shape of a parabola we also have the shape of half parabola then we have the shape of complement of half parabola so what we are going to take into consideration is half parabola because we want to find the area of half parabola so as you can see the area of half parabola is going to be two third then multiply by a which is going to be the the, the height then multiply by b which is going to be the length so it's going to be two third multiply by a then multiply by b so this is going to be two third then multiply by a a which is basically going to be one then multiply by b which is going to be 1.5 so this is going to give us one so this is equals to one so this is going to be the area of this half parabola so where is one located so one one is going to be somewhere here because we started from zero then we need to stop at this uh, location over here we need to stop at this location so we are going to place one here so this is one we're going to place one over here so now we have one so now we have one kiloniton meter 
So now what do you see next after one? So first of all, let me write one here so that you can see this properly. So this is one kilonewton meter. So now after one kilonewton meter, what we have the next uh, shape. So we have this uh, shape. So we also need to take the area of this shape. So let me draw this. So I'm going to draw this. So we have something like this. So the height is basically negative two kilonewton, negative two to kilonewton. Why the length is basically one point five meter. So this is one point five meter. So we need to take a look at the area of this shape. So now, if you take a look at this image, this is basically the complement of our parabola. So this is what we have. So we want to take the area of this complement of our parabola. So the area is going to be one third multiplied by A, which is the height, then multiplied by B, which is going to be the length. So this is the area of complement of our parabola. So this is going to be one divide theory, then multiply by two, then multiply by 1.5. So this is going to give us one so now we have one kilonewton meter now remember we started from one kilonewton meter as you can see over here so this is basically going to be one kilonewton meter then we also need to add up this area now as you can see this is a negative area of as you can see why this is a negative area so meaning it is going to be one kilonewton minus one kilonewton meter minus one kilonewton meter so which is going to give us zero so this is going to be zero so meaning we are going to stop yeah so we're going to stop at this region so we're going to stop at the zero region so now we know the location of our moment so we just need to connect the moment so that is all we need to do we just need to connect the moment now how can we do this we're also going to use this um we are going to use this uh, circle here to also draw the shape of the parabola so this is what we're going to do now if you take a look at this um, image here as you can see, we are having a we are having a positive decreasing slope because as you can see, from this point to this point, basically the area is decreasing, and we have a positive we have a positive area, so it's going to be positive decreasing. So positive decreasing. If you take a look at this circle, the shape is going to look something like this. So we are going to have something like this. So this is how the shape is going to look like. So now from this region to this region what is the shape going to look like so if you take a look at this um, shape over here as you can see from this point to this point the area is basically increasing and we have a negative area so this is negative decreasing so let's look at this image so negative increasing the shape is going to look something like this so all we need to do we just need to connect this from this point to this point it is going to look something like this so this is going to be the shape so this is going to be the moment diagram. So as you can see, we are having a positive moment diagram. So the moment diagram, the areas, the close up as well. As you can see, from this point to this point, the area close, uh, closes up. If your area doesn't close up, then meaning you made a mistake, you need to check your work and see where you made um, the mistake and try to correct the mistake. So this is going to be the shear diagram for this beam. Why this is also going to be the moment diagram for this beam. So this is how we can draw shear and bending moment diagram for a triangular distributed load. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if this is the first time you are coming across my channel, do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel because I make content on civil engineering. So with that being said, this is all I have. See you in my next lesson. Bye-bye.